Igbo abused, called greedy after playing a major role in shaping Lagos and Abuja. Chief Emmanuel Iwanyangu says, <laughs> now, wow. So now he's coming to speak about the way Igbo have been dealt with across the country, saying they have been abused, they have been, um, you know, called greedy for, you know, being able to contribute in shaping Lagos and Abuja because they did. Commercially, they did. The whole, the commercial hub of Nigeria, whether we like it or not. Okay. So, in the midst of all of that, he vows a uh, true and reconciliation committee will expose malicious falsehood against the Igbos. And he also said, why I think Lagos demolitions were politically motivated. Okay. So, he also laments uh, and then demands compensation for victims. He also laments Eze, Eze Ndigbo in Lagos detained indefinitely for mentioning IPOP. No way Nigeria can survive without restructuring, that's what he said. And speaking on what he discussed with Obasanjo during a revisit, that is exactly. So Chief Emmanuel Iwanyango is the pres President General for Hannes Ndigbo. In this monitored interview, the leader of the Igbo Ape Social Cultural Organization says he thinks the demolition of properties belonging to mainly, uh, mainly to the Igbo people in Abule Ado area of Lagos, uh, Lagos State was politically influenced. Iwana who also speaks on the former president of Nova Sanjo's visit to him alleged more, uh, marginalization of Indigo in Nigeria, restructuring detention, uh, the restructuring detention of Eze. Mwajiako in Lagos, as well as the reason of Hanese leadership set up the Peace and Reconciliation Committee uh, said. So, you recently played the host to former President Olusegun of Basanjo at your residence in Oweri, Imo State. So, the meeting was described as symbolic. Would you like to share some of these issues of mutual interest? that the leader of Ohanese Indigo discussed with Obasanjo. Okay, so it was a press interview that Iwanyangu uh, had. And so this question was put to him about the visit of Obasanjo to him in Oweri. And he said the visit was purely a private one, obviously, but the situation in Nigeria today is so bad, so critical that it must be discussed when leaders meet. And I don't think anybody needs to be told the situation of the country. Things are not good, and it is important to under underline the fact that it is not proper to blame this government for what is happening because this is a combination of errors and failures of many past administrations. But the worst situation is in not taking step, not uh, taking action. I believe that the government in the past few, few days has taken some steps which have given some confidence to Nigerians when they have uh, taken steps to suspend somebody who actually was suspected to have done a wrong thing. Mind you, she has not uh, been convicted by any law court, but it is no more to suspend her. And uh, if she's free, that is it. If she's not found guilty, okay, that is if she's not found guilty, she will come back to her job. The government has taken practical steps to show they identify with the sufferings of the masses by cutting down the entourage because of the because the entourage of Mr. President's recent visit abroad was embarrassing. We are talking about over 500 people following an entourage. It is very embarrassing. Hmm. And so they put another question on him on amalgamation. One thing is clear in 1914. When Lugard, Lord Lugard amalgamated Nigeria, the country had ethnic nationalities, people with different cultures, languages, and religions. It was clear to us that that time the survival of Nigeria would depend on our ability to manage our differences. And of course, our forbearers, our forbearers before independence were able to manage it. The military intervention in 1966 was absolutely very unfortunate. It was the saddest thing that ever happened to Nigeria. Unfortunately, that was blamed on the Igbo, but there was no reason for Igbo to topple that government, but it was blamed on us. Now that particular government uh, 
before independence had a constitution, a true federal constitution, a constitution that could actually apply without a lot of strain to a people who have diverse backgrounds like Nigeria. We had a true federal constitution in 1960 to 1963 that worked for us. Later on, okay, the change to unitary constitution which is not right so now that is why we in Igbo land are saying please let us have a true federal constitution what we are operating today is a unitary government it does not work for people who have diverse uh, backgrounds hmm okay uh so take many countries for instance if you go to a place like britain you have scotland you have Wales and you have England. They have a constitution that binds them together and it is working for them. But if you go to America, we are supposed to be following their kind of constitution. What they have is not a unitary government. Every state in America has got a certain level of autonomy. Now I believe that the government of Bola Metinubu should take steps to see if we can actualize this restructuring of Nigeria. Without a proper restructuring, Nigeria will continue to have problems. There is no way this country can survive. Today, everybody is talking of presidency in a restructured Nigeria. The presidency will not attract so much attention as it does today, because today every power is vested in the president. Hmm. Okay. And then, um, on a real project as I said last time, for example, a child who is born in South South or South East in the past 30 to 40 years has not even seen a train before. He doesn't know what it is all about. But we have borrowed money and the whole money we borrowed was invested in railway line from Western Nigeria to Northern Nigeria. So these are some of the problems we have because South East and South South were not in power. Now, coming specifically to one of the Igbo, our own is very serious. It is very, very serious. We feel very sad about what is happening to us. Now, wow. And that's exactly what Iwanyango is trying to put here. And he's talking about how Nigeria, I mean, how Igbos have been marginalized so badly up till now. A lot of things have happened and now Igbos are not in the know, are not in the loop and they don't want to include them in the loop and it is very bad. So the bottom line of the whole thing, if things must work in Nigeria, is to restructure. Even though they have set up a reconciliation committee to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, Nigerians, uh, we, we unite together, Nigeria must be restructured. The power at the center must be, you know, devolved and then decentralized. And let the states have, uh, you know, certain level of autonomy to run their affairs. We say we are running presidential system of government, which is unitary in nature, copying it from U.S. But U.S. system is not unitary. U.S. system runs uh, a, a, a structural system that gives autonomy, certain level of autonomy to the states. Okay, so Nigeria should copy what is right and restructure so that each group, each state can, to a certain level, have some some autonomy and then run their system. Without which, Nigeria will not move forward. That is what. Uh, um chief Iwanyang will say and that is getting away from the uh, uh principles of amalgamation that was uh, established by Lord Lugard in 1914. So thank you for listening and let's have your comment on this Iwanyang's uh, observations.